Okay, so we'll call the regular select board meeting to order. First up is public comment. Public comment on not, something that's not on the agenda. Seeing none. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump out. Thank you all. Yep, take Thanks care. So. Move to approval of Bye -bye. the. Uh, approval of the agenda. So moved. Sorry, second. <laughs> <laughs> Those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do we have anything on? The, oh, we have minutes on the consent calendar. Yeah, you have that draft. It's a little more Spartan than this, too. So think about whether or not you're okay with that. That was, as I'm your recording secretary, it's get what I can pull together. <laughs> that one's rustic, we'll call it. <laughs> All right, entertain a motion to accept the consent calendar. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries uh, into the business part of the agenda. Um, First up is the 25 budget review and discussion. Uh, we got the new version. It's out for the public also, right, Trevor? It's posted. Yep, it's all in the packet and then I'll put a, a standalone copies here up for folks once you approve it and all that, once we got a final. Do we have any questions on the changes that Trevor made for us from the last meeting? I don't have we any. Just, yeah, it was just the four to the salary lines that we talked about last week. So that, that was it. The rest of it's the same. All right. Um, hearing no questions, uh, we're uh, we're not taking a vote tonight to accept the budget. We're going to let you put it into the actual town meeting warning and vote them both okay. through at the same time. Yep. Um, so not seeing anything there. Uh, review, we're going to review the draft of the town meeting oh. morning. Yep. So we've clarified a few things. Let me just scroll down to it in my doc. So we have um, in there, the greens are the elected sort of open questions. The blues are just the don't lose them placeholders, make sure they all match. And then the yellows are the new things, just in Taylor's scheme. The library trustee, there's one for a term of years. They changed their bylaws. We knew it was different than the last time. So that one that's in green in article one, um, Emory was able to verify. I highlighted where the senior center petitioned to go up $4,000. That's article, oops, scroll too fast. I'm gonna say 19, but. Um, uh, 14. 15, 14, yeah. And then as you get into the article 25, I just put this in here for consideration. Usually we have gravel road reserve as the other one with the paving reserve for where any surplus goes. That highway equipment reserve is the one that's really short funded. The gravel road reserve has a healthy balance, even though we've been using it for different emergency response type stuff. Um, so just to give you a give you the options. If you want gravel road reserve, we can go back and change it. That was just sort of as a way to, to goose the funding. Um, since we're fully staffed and if we can keep it, hopefully we won't have year end surpluses. That's where they've been coming from by and large. Um, it's through a lack of sustained employee numbers. I think it makes sense to have it go into the equipment reserve. Especially because we got some more equipment that needs to be replaced. But yeah, that's sort of the real area of need. And then we could use the tool, other reserves in the future if, if you wanted to. But that was sort of the, out of all of our reserves, the one in the kind of the worst spot. Police reserves close, but it's brand new. So that, that's to be expected. Um, and then. Anybody have clarify. any concerns with going with highway reserve instead of gravel reserve? I no, think it makes no. the most sense. Sorry, Alyssa. No, I just, no concerns. Okay. And then there's, I got to verify that term on the budget committee. I'm pretty sure that's Mike Penrod's, but I wanted to double check it. Um, and then the one that's the remaining term, Rachel Putney stepped off in December. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And so we're short one. We've been advertising for it, but it's not been anything that's produced a oh, lot no. of hits. 
That's mm. too bad. I'm sorry to lose Rachel. She's been great. Uh, she and, it was family calculus in terms of just they're you know they're busy. Um, oh yeah, so, oh yeah. She and yeah. Paula are, sounds like they're jamming. Paula, she and Paula energize their bunnies with the family. That's no doubt. Uh, my apologies for being late. I got tied up in another meeting. So that's fine. Twenty eight okay. and twenty nine both say town treasurer. One of those should say what? town clerk. That the dangers of copy and paste and moving too fast. <laughs> you got the site right with E and F. Yep, twenty eight would be the clerk then if it's E. Um, can somebody bring me up to speed? Have we have we um, have we uh, moved the cannabis board forward to March February first? No, we approved we approved them. Oh, you did. Okay, yeah. I had the sense. I had this. I had the sense from. Uh, uh, from the earlier message from from Trevor that we might um, we might hold off on a decision on those as well, but I would have voted to approve them anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> we we might that's have you ratify them. Moving. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm all for that. Okay. So we, yeah, we may have you ratify them just so there's no issue. I don't think there will. Oh, be, okay. Uh, all right. That keeps everybody safe. Um, yeah. So we'll fix those on 2020. And that's the, those are the questions. That's the language you've seen before. We did buy that the 1991 vote on use of Australian ballot does apply here. So these four votes, that's why they're all here. Um, Article 30 was one I just wanted to get before you so you could think about it. This highlights what should we be doing using Australian ballot more broadly. Um, is in use for everything from our budgets to elected officers outside of the budget committee in our case um to if we have an appeal vote on an ordinance change on a land use change those are australian ballot. school does all their stuff by australian ballot um we found that participants went up during the pandemic when we were able to get ballots in everybody's hands um and it makes the broadest number of voices can participate because it becomes you know a longer window and you can participate from home in the office on election day is it as traditional as town meeting no but how representative is 150 people on a snowy Saturday morning in a town of 40 um, is sort of the counter to that. And I think towns are moved, but I just wanted to put it before you. I think you can probably guess where I'm at on that one after a career on town meeting floors. Um, I, I just I think, think it's a it good does. Idea. That'll love the yeah. ballot box. Yep. Yeah. I think it's good. It, yeah. I mean, I think my question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say no, I was going to say my question was just related to like what participation has looked at, and it sounds like if it's gone up, then why not? We we saw bigger numbers during the pandemic, especially the year that we mailed everybody a ballot. Um, that made it about as easy as possible. You had to do is fill it out, stick it in the envelope, and send it back to us. Um, I don't remember the numbers. We had Emory pull them, but that was a that was a bigger spike. You know, turnout is still like a good roast turnout. At the local level, I think it was in the 30s um, in terms of repercussion. But um, is, there a, about is there a cost to it, or is it covered by? Uh, there would be, um, but we are sort of bear some of the cost because we do a budgets and select board races and all things by Australian ballot anyway. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about a marginal change based on length of warning. Um, it, it may not even be a change at all. Because we already have to do them. Um, I think it makes sense. And that question was stolen right from the statutory section on the bus, but we've sent this all over to Mike Taren as well so that we get his eyeballs on it. So we make sure we, we've got everything worded the way we want it. And then you'll see there's the two placeholders that are reserved for the engine question. We had hoped to reconnect with him today on those. Um, we flooded him with questions all at once. Um, so sort of in, fa in fairness to Mike, we, we loaded the zone pretty good. So we've got reserved, we'll have those worked out before you have to warn it. But the reason there's two of them is that as we've talked historically in the past, um, the potential for a vote of the existing district to sort of allow expansion, and then a second for those that are in the expanded zone to, to, or not to get in, and they would both be from the floor as well based on on that 1991 language. So that's why there's two articles set aside for it. And then what we'll have back for him too is sort of that multi-part question on if the expanded districts approved, 
can you go in and amend sort of that budget at some later on and what does that process look like so we'll ha we'll have all that um in this draft warning right now but everything else other than those five quite at the end is exactly more or less the same as you've seen in in prior to the same sort of base um base program but this is just a draft so this is also let you talk about if there's anything you see you don't want on you do want on right we haven't talked about anything any different article 30 is the only sort of new wrinkle for you um, um uh, again my apologies for arriving late and in the middle of this going over the proposed warning um i see in here the question about appointing a town treasurer um 28 and 29 but they look redundant uh, one's I, supposed to say treasurer one's supposed to say clerk all right I, that's what i wanted to be clear on um, yeah i copied pasted and changed the statutory reference to the title okay so it is going to so 29 will be clerk and or vice versa 28 will vice be versa yep 28 yeah. will be clerk yep okay because um and um they've got till monday and but to your knowledge has anybody applied to run for the clerk treasurer position no that's why emory's thinking he'll step forward to it sort of with that kind of provide that 45 day window if or less um, um so he's offered to do that okay excellent all right again sorry for my tardiness but <laughs> that's fine <laughs> You guys are joking with him. Is that you, you folks have gotten through more in 15 minutes than I think um, you've made a land speed record here. <laughs> I let him try. Trevor's not even on vacation. And I was things done. <laughs> three minutes yeah. late for a meeting once, and we were already like five <laughs> on item five. I was like, whoa. <laughs> wow. Well, I might actually have dinner before 9 30. Sounds good to me. Um. um I have a question about just the situation with the town clerk then, since it's looking like we don't have anybody running, even if they vote down appointment, we still have to appoint somebody for at least one year. So do we have anything out there to try to recruit anybody for that, for not, just the applications? Not yet. I think when we start the application process, that might be a good time to figure out if there's some contingency plan, basically, um, if the questions don't go. And, and then we just come back with, I mean, it might depend on what happens with the questions. Are they narrow margins? They're voted from the floor, but the Australian ballot piece passed. I'm going to try again in November um, while you're inside that window. And then that way, you know, if we've got to elect for the remainder of a term, we're queued up for that. So there's a couple of different options that are enabled because it's a gubernatorial presidential year. Um, I feel like I should know this, but are we allowed to try and help encourage people to run? And what is the deadline for them? Is it the 29th? Is it like soon? It's yeah, I, the 29th is, but I wouldn't quote me on that. It's soon is it's yeah. it's, it's, definitely it's, deadline. it's Monday. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's. In typical bureaucratic fashion, it's the sixth Monday before town meeting day. Which is a, sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to love it. Nothing's ever simple, but it's Monday at the close of day of the clerk's, clerk's office, uh, which is. But, uh, but Trevor, didn't you say that uh, Emery was willing to put his paperwork in and run? Yep. Just to be able to fill that position for a a period of time while we appoint somebody yep so then if the articles yep yeah, the articles pass it gives you time to appoint and train and have some overlap if they don't pass then you're still kind of in the appointment game anyway but it gets into that do you go back to the question do we have a an election at point so that would be the little wrinkle there but it gives us some options at least well that's nice of him <laughs> yeah i keep joking with him that this is all a these are all signs we really want to go like <laughs> as hard as possible. Maybe that's its own thing, but. Wow. Um, so I have another question um, about if that 
passes that all public questions are by Australian ballot, would in the future that mean the budget committee would have to do a petition to run and be on the ballot? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could always, we could restructure that it could be different, but I, I think one of the things is that it, it could be by ballot like everybody else. It's not a super high bar in terms of the number of signatures. Um, but I think one of the things we should talk about over the next year is the buddy generally. Um, we've sort of on it before, but just to make sure it's, if we're going to keep it, is it as vibrant and useful as possible so that the members who volunteer, those who run, you know, it's a good experience. Uh, they're getting something out of it. And we get something out of it. Um, and we've got great people there now, but we, um, are we using it to its fullest potential? Is it an idea that I try to reinvigorate and keep, or is it an idea that maybe the time for something different has come? Um, uh, I, I have a question also about 31 and 32, which are placeholders right now. Um, what might be the distinction between those two questions and are they advisory or not? Are they, in this case, they would be 31. The, the thinking is based on prior votes and what we've understood of the process to date, there's third, for example, would be a vote by the existing district uh, residents, voters to expand the district. And then 32 would be for, for those inside the expanded district boundaries. So the new district residents would vote to join as well. That's how we've held pending okay what Mike Tarrant says is the best way to construct that based on articles of merger and, and statute and all that. Right, so so they would be not advisory, they would be, I don't wanna use the term mandatory, but. Um, they would be right, a decision. I, right, right. They, they would be subject to, um, yeah, okay. I just want, I didn't know whether we were going an advisory route, like shall the town consider expansion of the boundaries to thus and such. These would both be uh, depending on the results. Um, and I'm assuming we're going to um, um, speak with this in terms of, about this in terms of fiscal 26. Oh, probably, yeah. Or, could, later, or later this fiscal year, either way. Yeah, and some of that is the piece we're waiting on from Mike too, is how do we handle the budget piece sort of at a later time? Okay. And that might dictate effective dates, for example, if there's, we've got to wait for regular cycles or there's a way to adjust or what it might be, but. Yeah, yeah. And Trini, does the police services committee, um, um, are you still working on this question of the boundaries being kind of wonky? Uh, yeah, but we didn't meet uh, this week, a combination of people sick and the weather. Mm-hmm sidelined us so we're back on monday right okay yeah Thanks. monday yeah um but right. yeah that's one of the topics we gotta okay all gotta right. look at what that is like right now it's just all the properties that touch route 66 and route 12 uh-huh and um windover road um and then what that's 12a i guess down through so um right it uh but it adds a lot of properties that are are not really there. Like some of the properties on Sunset touch 66. Mm -hmm. So it raises the question of, you know, do those, does that entire property go on or what do you do? So it's just kicking that around some to get right. a final decision on the borders so it can come back to. But But it doesn't go back right. into the neighborhoods east and west or north and south left and right whatever it is i'm not sure the geography but right it just follows um 66 and it doesn't go back in off the side streets correct right uh and a lot of that was be when we started talking about the challenges that would bring for a dispatcher yeah absolutely um sure no that that makes sense that got pretty quick, complex quick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, well, well, it's Mike's working on those pieces for us. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so that, uh, we'll have a final version of that 
<clears throat> at the next meeting for to vote on a uh, manager's report. I sent you the separate thing about the say word logging starting. That was just a kind of a general heads up there. Um, as I mentioned, what we really want to dig into the FEMA stuff. They want us to dig into it um, so we can start moving that. I'm going to try to dedicate a good chunk of time here to move some of those things to completion um, so that we can get those done. I feel like there was one other that was smaller but timely. Um, we've also been invited to participate in conversations about the eclipse that's coming. We're not on the line of transit or whatever it's called, but you just you may hear mm -hmm. some about that. I still don't fully understand what the draw is, but. Well, we, yeah. I think we are on the line of transit. We're, uh, we're, are we? Yeah, and, and regional tourism authorities, and I believe the state tourism authorities are making a big, big deal out of it. It's like Vermont's the Stonehenge of the. <laughs> well, we're, but we're not, Randolph, the, the primary areas in the Northeast Kingdom. Okay. It's oh, I see. Very northern saying. part of the state. We're going to yeah. see it, but they're going to get the full effect up there. That's uh, the major impact. So at the state level, the planning is all is statewide, but the big impact is in the northern part of the state. Wow. So the we've so already the, got people trying to reserve spots to park their airplanes on the airports. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Um, it's insane. It's insane. So, they said it could be worse than fish. The fish concerts that came to Coventry. I love it. I love it. It's bringing back the Vermont Reggae Festival uh, in days. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, well, a different group of people, though. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying these aren't all going to be fun loving. They're not going to be? <laughs> no. Oh, no. No. <laughs> a little bit different approach. Well, life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to get some, you know, crazies, but. Uh, well, in that case, I'm glad we're not um, in the Northeast. <laughs> That's right. Scott Scott and his crew just did boat training the other day, so we're ready. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Just crack out the flashlights. Right. All right. Uh, next, uh, entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Uh, second. And Scott, maybe join us if, for the first one, if that's okay with you guys too. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. All so, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.